What the heck is happening with vertical farming? Not only is the stock of App Harvest more than 95% down from its initial public offering, but another huge vertical farming company, AeroFarms, not only failed to go public after its SPAC fell through in 2021, but now they have also declared for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. In addition to these individual massive failures, a huge array of previous vertical farming darlings like Fifth Season, Calera, in farms, Iron Ox and Upwards Farms have either gone bankrupt or have had to scale back their operations, pulling back from key markets and firing significant portions of their workforce in the same breath. So again, what the heck is happening with vertical farming? Is the entire market really about to crash and burn after all of the hype? Well, not to drag the answer too much, the answer is no, it's not failing, but it is going through one hell of a shift. So let me explain. So the past 36 months have been a tough time for vertical farming startups. After all the hype and years of massive investments into the industry, it seems that vertical farming has suddenly hit a brick wall. And I think the reason can be summarized into three key points. First, the last few years, up and until the current downturn, saw a huge amount of easy capital floating around with a ton of large investors basically fighting over new investment opportunities that they could offload their money onto. With all of the lofty promises and hype around vertical farming, many of these investors were infested with FOMO or the fear of missing out as they were racing to invest into the next big sustainable unicorn. So while you could rationally think that having a ton of capital flowing into this new market is a good thing, and by the way, it is, the problem was that many vertical farming companies started basing their businesses and growth on the promise of a never-ending flow of outside capital instead of, you know, building sustainable businesses. So when the financial market started to finally tighten up and the amount of investor money started decreasing, many vertical farming startups realized that they simply didn't have the cash flow or burn rate to sustain the business on their own. Alas, we started seeing companies previously funded with millions and millions of dollars suddenly going bankrupt or firing huge portions of their staff. Talking of which, the second big reason for the recent downturn in vertical farming has been the, mm, some would say, questionable business models in the industry. So without going too deep into this topic, let's put it this way. With all the hype around vertical farming technology and all the cheap investor money flowing in, many vertical farming startups were in the business of building the biggest, shiniest and coolest looking robot and AI driven facilities that actually looked more like car factories rather other than farms. And all of this was naturally made possible by hiring top talent, including ex-engineers and scientists from Tesla, Apple and, you know, other big Silicon Valley companies. Of course, this is how many tech startups operate and it's all really cool and nice until you realize that you are, in the end, selling salad. So, on the other side, we have massive capital investments and high operating costs, while on the other side, we are selling mostly leafy greens and lettuce. So the problem is, how do you compete against conventional agriculture when these traditional operators grow a pretty much similar product with usually much lower price points and who have a long and already mature history and a ton of experience running farms as a business. And of course, traditional agriculture has often relied on relatively cheap labor. Basically, you don't need a NASA engineer to run a lettuce farm, while vertical farming has often been done by teams of highly educated scientists and engineers. So all of this has led to a reality where only a handful of vertical farming companies has ever been able to break even, and many of the largest companies in the world, like Infarm, are just now starting to focus on profitability, which is quite a bit easier since they let go more than half of their global staff. Anyways, the third reason for why vertical farming has been failing is basically just a continuation of the previous two reasons, and it's that most vertical farms have been running with horrible unit economics if they have even thought about unit economics to start with. So in simple terms, even if large capital investments enable vertical farming companies to maximize production efficiency through automation, which it definitely often does, running a vertical farm is still expensive with high operating costs, for example, from comparably high energy consumption and high salaries. Many vertical farming companies have actually cited specifically high 
energy costs as one of the key reasons for low profitability, which you know, fair enough, but if we're being honest here, if your vertical farming business is crashing because of increasing electricity costs, I would guess you didn't really have enough margin in your prices in the first place. And of course, what's even worse, with the high inflation and increasing consumer prices, very few consumers are willing to pay a premium on vertically produced salads and leafy greens in the first place. So considering the razor thin sales margins and the high capital expenditure to set up vertical farming in the first place, many vertical farming startups have simply run out of cash while trying to weather out the storm. Okay, so if we take a step back and uh, look at the issues with vertical farming from a bit further away, I think Albert Lin from Vegbed summarized the situation quite elegantly by saying, and I'm paraphrasing here, vertical farms do not, generally speaking, scale up like classic Silicon Valley software as a service businesses. Basically, you can't growth hack a vertical farming business like its software business by increasing your paid advertising budgets or by hiring a few social media influencers to market your services. Instead, scaling up a vertical farming operation means investing into multi-million dollar facilities, building and training local teams to run those facilities, getting your logistics networks up and running, and locking in your local customers to buy your produce in the first place. And of course, what makes this even worse, once you've committed all those resources into scaling, it's really hard and or expensive to downscale production or even pivot to another product category in the case where the demand for your original products wasn't as expected. Taking all of this into account, what is really happening with vertical farming? Well, in short, the industry simply built up too much hype with companies making lofty promises that were never kept and raising huge investment rounds, all of which led to a bubble that finally burst when the global financial markets started slowing down. In addition to the hype, the vertical farming industry has always been a victim of a huge amount of green and whitewashing with zero transparency or common reporting standards. So all of this has now led to a point of adjustment in the market where a significant amount of players will run out of business and only those that are able to combine their technology investments with sound business models and sustainable unit economics will survive. Okay, so a question, is this basically the end of vertical farming as we know it? Well, no, it's not. This is basically just a normal cycle in building a new industry, meaning huge amount of companies jump in initially to utilize a new opportunity and later a clear majority of these new ventures fail, while those left standing will have to learn from others' mistakes adjusting their approach for the future. So having said that, what is going to happen now? Well, basically, any company left standing will have to start focusing on basic business fundamentals. While this might sound boring, Hey, business isn't always supposed to be sexy. While before, startups were competing over who has the coolest, shiniest, AI-operated farm with computer vision and spectral analysis, now the competition is basically shifting towards the question, who is able to combine this wonderful technology with a sustainable business model. This means focusing on good unit economics, cost cutting, and establishing consistent operations with healthy cash flows and long customer life cycles. And also, if vertical farming companies want to ever become more environmentally sustainable compared to conventional farming, they really need to start focusing on this topic, because as we explain in this video, vertical farms are definitely not as sustainable as they want you to be leave.